A friend of mine, she lost her husband seven years ago, and since losing her husband, she really hasn't dated at all. She just, well, she didn't feel ready, and this was confirmed when she'd go out for a disappointing dinner or with a guy or a blind date. Every time she realized something, she, she wasn't ready, until a few months ago when this kind, compassionate man walked into her life. Someone she didn't expect and someone, let's be honest, she wasn't looking for. But the truth is, she, well, she's fallen head over heels for him. But she's always felt conflicted. Is it the right time? What will my kids think? Am I too old? Is he too old? All these questions. And among those questions was a question many Christians turn to when they're at one of those major crossroads in their life. She was asking, is this part of of God's plan. Am I doing the right thing? She believed, like many do, that God had sort of a blueprint for her life, and she wanted some sign, some confirmation that this was part of God's plan. The problem is, that plan, that blueprint, it doesn't exist. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in for day four of this series that we're calling The Five Dumb Things Smart Christians Believe. It's meant to be sort of a lighthearted exploration of assumptions, beliefs, anecdotes that we sincere, well-meaning, educated, smart Christians believe. But they're not true. They're sort of spiritual urban legends, if you will, that get passed on from generation to generation. They're things that sound biblical, they sound Christian, but the truth is, they aren't. And today, uh, we're talking about something that I think most Christians believe, but have never really considered. And that's the idea that we have a God who has a blueprint for your life and for mine. God has a plan. God's got it all figured out upstairs. My job down here is to figure out what that plan is. The problem is that plan doesn't exist. The idea of a detailed blueprint for my life, it's a myth. Uh, The idea that God knows everything down to the number of hairs on my head, you see, it's just not true. It's not there. Consider for a minute how a blueprint, a blueprint works. It's a p- specific set of instructions that spells out everything in detail so that whoever is the builder of the house, they can build exactly what the architect had in mind. And so if you are a contractor on that job, you better follow the blueprints to every detail. No ifs, ands, or buts. Otherwise, there'll be a lawsuit and the building inspector might be after you. I wonder if God works a little differently than that. Like, I wonder if what God has for us is more like a game plan, if you will. If you've played sports, a game plan is very different than a blueprint. Rather than spelling everything out, uh, everything in detail, uh, a, a game plan gives general concepts. It's the type of defense, the type of offense we'll use. But it leaves a lot of room for freedom, for flexibility, for adjustments as the game unfolds. For example, if you've ever played football, you know that every play, on every play, there are on-the-fly adjustments that are built into every play. What starts out as uh, a post pattern might turn into something else altogether if the linebackers they blitz or the receivers aren't open. I wonder if that's how God works. God's got a desire for how the game of your life will unfold, but God loves you too much to give you a blueprint that constricts you to some predetermined mold. God loves you so much, he gives you what theologians call free will. You really get to choose who you want to date. You really get to choose what job you'll invest your career in. You really get to decide what type of dog you'll buy, a Chihuahua or a Great Dane. You get to decide. You see, God doesn't care where we work so much as how we work where we live as much as how we live, even whom you will marry as much as how you do marriage. We spend a lot of time worrying, is this part of God's plan for my life? Relax. Make a choice. Move on. Remember, God said, 
For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. After dying for our sins, do you really think God wants to doom us to a life of regret because we picked the wrong college, the wrong major, or even the wrong spouse? Not a chance. You see, our job isn't so much to find God's plan, some blueprint God is elusively hiding from us. Our job isn't to find something as much as it is to become someone, a reflection of his love and character, no matter what decisions we might make in this life. As we close today, I've got a couple of questions for you. First, prior to listening to, uh, to this today, how would you have responded to the idea that God has a blueprint for my life? Would you agree or disagree? And second, just a moment ago, I said, our job isn't to find God's plan for our life as much as, much as it's to become someone who is a reflection of God's love and character. Do you think most Christians spend more time searching or more time becoming? What about you?